What's up, gang? Hello, hello. Happy Friday. We made it to the weekend. If that's a thing that exists for you, congratulations. Um, should we chat about Big Brother last night real quick? Is that worth talking about? <laughs> it's a mess. That's what it is. Okay, hang on. Let me read. I saw you posted a whole bunch in the Discord about it, Muse. Um, and I read part of it. Uh, there will be a competition at some point this week. Um, the person who wins that competition will be the one who competes on Thursday to stay in the house. If they beat the competition, they stay. If they lose, the other one goes back. Expect the producers to introduce a terrible twist. I mean, they already have. They're basically at the house and they have nothing to do all week. So they're back in the house now, right? Jared and Cam. Like they went back in last night. Boomerang for Jared. Ugh. Or the person who wins the comp during the week, they get to decide if they compete on Thursday once they see what the comp is. Well, so if they, okay, so they do their little battle back competition and we'll see that Sunday? I want the Caitlin Herman puzzle again for the final challenge. I don't know what that is. Um, wait, and so if you win, say Jared wins, and then he sees what the competition is Thursday, he decides if he wants to compete in it or not. If he doesn't want to compete in it, then he chooses to have Cam compete. And if Cam loses, Jared goes back in. Why is this complicated and stupid? She had a six piece puzzle to stay in the house and she couldn't do it. Wait, okay, wait. So they have a competition just between the two of them first. And then the separate is the second competition is that them on their own? Alex! Nice Septon Pearson. Thank you. I got it back in January. But uh, impressive that you noticed that. Yes, from what we understand. Okay. So it's like... It'll be a thing that they have a certain amount of time to do. And either they accomplish it in that time or they don't. And if they do, they get to stay. And if they don't, the other person gets to stay. I mean, that's kind of interesting that if you win this first competition, you get to decide if you think you could beat the puzzle or if you want to try and get the other person to lose the puzzle. That's sort of interesting. Are they allowed to talk to the house guests? Everybody's just there hanging out? Why couldn't they do this like separately essentially like as a literal redemption island thing and then one of them just comes back like why does it have to be in the house let the people in the house keep doing big brother so the game keeps moving forward well this thing exists separately the way that they do it on survivor <laughs> jared's already making a mess of course he is his whole his whole game is mess Ugh. I don't want it. I don't want it to be this way. <laughs> okay, here's my pitch. For, this is what Muse posted in the Discord. Here's my pitch for what I think they should have done this week if the producers had no choice but to not have a normal week and only two episodes. Steal from BB Can like they've done in the past and do a safety chain except play it out over the whole week instead of one night send jared and cam home make everyone in the house a zombie and in order to come back to life they have to be picked in the safety chain okay they've sort of done this on um that online show that we won't that youtube show that we won't talk about anymore um have a comp to determine the first person who is safe and then they each pick a person 
and once only two people are left, they spend the rest of the week deciding which of the two to vote out, like a normal Thursday. That's interesting. I hate that Sari now has to focus on Jared maybe staying instead of just focusing on rebuilding her game. Jared and Cameron have already made a deal with each other to share all the information. I think Sari would be okay even if Cam wins his way back in. You saw he was breaking up with Blue this morning? Ugh. It's a cost-saving measure for Big Brother. No need wasting hotel fees for a week for Jared and Cameron. But it's bad TV! The redacted mess. But you know what show I'm talking about that everybody was really into early in the pandemic. Yeah, if half your viewership drops off, it's not good business. You do, yeah. I think that's an interesting mechanism. Games that show, like, people standing in the house. Uh, like, as much as I hated that everybody was picking on Sari in the HOH comp last night. Um... That sort of mechanism is interesting. Um, I don't think I'll watch either Sunday or Thursday episodes, to be honest. I mean, I'll put them on, but I'll be doing other things. Also, Hamster Watch found the listing for the house they have rented for jury, and the cost to rent per week has nearly tripled in like four years. Yes, that show, EVLP. That's the show we're talking about. That's why I understand the mechanism of the safety chain, because they always had a round each season that was like that. Similarly, in the more, uh, this second season of um, Traders Australia, the only comp, the only um, mission that was interesting uh, was the one where they had to. Like half the people were set up on torture devices and the other, and they had to match their answers to the team that was not um, in the chairs. And choosing whether you wanted to do that or not as the, as, the other, as the team on the side to determine if you wanted to put money in the pot or not with these people, that was interesting. BB Can did a safety chain as a double eviction a couple seasons ago. I mean, that certainly seems less far less stupid than this zombie bullshit. And you're telling me there's like nowhere on the CBS lot you could just do this real quick on the side? Come on. This company has all the money in the world. These people. Like, I mean, this is just evidence of exactly what the WGA and SAG after are on strike about, is that they won't they want their CEOs to have the money, and they won't spend the money on anything else unless it makes them money. It'll be interesting to see if the viewership is significantly down this coming week because everything is so stupid. Why are they slowing things down so much? So, and I was listening to, I was watching the, um, the recap last night as I was like, uh, getting ready for bed and stuff after the episode. And so I caught like an hour, an hour and a half of Rob and Taryn and Asia and Chappelle talking. Um, and they kept mentioning how it's like in this point in the game where things always are kind of like slow in the middle for a while. And they're just exacerbating it by effectively sending home one person in three weeks. I assume it is so that no one misses things while Survivor at Amazing Race launch. I mean, the timing does feel serendipitous, fortuitous, something like that. It's mind boggling to be the decision making. I mean, I don't understand most of the decisions around Big Brother in general, and certainly not this week. And the, the two episodes. What else is on TV Monday, Tuesday, Friday, or Saturday? So I keep thinking about this. Like, if I were in charge, when would I have the episodes? You keep your Thursday live evictions and NHOH competitions. And then I really feel like you should show the veto 
well, or even the HOH, if you're not airing HOH fully on Thursday, like Saturday, but Saturday is not a TV night. It's just not TV night. They've decided in the industry forever that Saturday is not when you air new television. So then Sunday, if you must, do that Sunday. But then have your next episode Tuesday, at least. But I would almost do like Sunday, Tuesday, Friday. It's weird Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But they took away feeds. I feel like feeds is the whole point. And I say that as someone who doesn't watch them. It's just weird to me that the lot, the show that is airing on television is for the most part so behind what is happening in the house and then they're constantly having to play catch up. In BB21, the comeback component was unique to say the least. They evic- the evicted house guests were confined to the, I don't, the HN room and not allowed to attend any ceremonies or comp, oh, the have not room and were not allowed to attend any ceremonies or competitions. They could eat whatever they want though and attend the evictions. They posted like an hour of feeds footage each day instead of full feeds. I did not watch the season. <laughs> um, yeah, they have this whole ass house. Put Jared and Cameron in a corner and leave them there. This is a solvable problem. There's way less people now. You could make any one of the rooms You don't need bedrooms for 16 people because there's, what, half that many people left. 10, whatever. Uh, Make the have-not room Jared and Cam's room for the week. Also, just imagine them being shut up in a room together. What a nightmare that would make incredible, awful TV. They were at, like, somebody in the chat last night... uh, on our HAP was like, who's coming back, Jared or Cameron? And <laughs> Chappelle just said, no. <laughs> camp comeback was actually very similar. The camp comeback people could still interact with everyone like Jared and Cam can. I mean, it's just, then why even, what a waste, like what a waste of time. Why even vote them out if they're just gonna be around for another week? And then one of them's going to go. And it really does, like, not that I'm even specifically rooting for Corey. I'm kind of not since he's tar- he's tar- he wants to target Sari. But imagine you're Corey and you made this big move. Like, you, you got the power, you took the shot. You did what you tr- set out to accomplish. And that may all get taken away from you. Granted, when when Cam's week got canceled, I just thought that was funny, but. Camp Comeback was very outraged in the internet community. I recall people comparing it to internment camp. All right, everybody calm down. It's not, it's not like nothing that's happening on a TV show is like an internment camp. That's too much. BB fans be wild. Part of it was all the people in it. Eyes were BIPOC, I see. That's also because all the pe- people of color were being targeted and sent to Camp Comeback. Well, that's not ideal. That's not a good look and that's not cool. And, you know, we could talk about the issues of like racial tensions and the things that are issues in society that then play out on TV shows that are microcosms of society. But when you see these three exit interviewing together, it was bad optics. Totally. Absolutely. I understand that. That's not cool, and I don't think that's okay. And that does not make it an internment camp. A thing we don't even really get taught about in school. I was in high school when I learned about internment camps. Despite us being taught about World War II every single year of school for my entire life. 
That's, you know, you cannot compare everything to the Holocaust and you cannot compare everything to internment camps either. It can be a racially bad thing. You can be doing racist shit and that doesn't automatically mean it's an internment camp. Okay, I can't speak with, I'm speaking about this with more authority than I actually have given I didn't watch the season. Uh, so let me stop because I don't really know what I'm talking. I mean, I can speak with authority that you can't just call anything an internment camp, uh, but let me not get myself into trouble talking about stuff I don't know about. You were taught about it in AP history. I mean, I'm sure it came up for me then too, but I think it was, I think I was a sophomore when we read Farewell to Manzanar in English class. And that was, that takes place largely in a Japanese internment camp in California that I knew nothing about. But like you said, much older than you would expect. Yeah. Yeah. We don't like to talk about the U.S. doing things that we shouldn't have done. Um, we're here to talk about how bad the concentration camps were, but then we won't acknowledge that we were in a lot of ways doing the same shit to Japanese people. Okay. We've talked about uh, Muse. Let me see if I can look at this link. I probably can't because it's for X.com. Something went wrong. <laughs> That's what comes up every time I click on one of those links. Uh, I don't think I learned about it at all in school, but I have since lived in Japan. Ran, I didn't know you lived in Japan and visited all the internment museums in the West. Uh, JC Moon Vest. <sighs> I'm also not, I'm not going to take time to address her continuing to defend her fucking husband. Her memoir is called But First God? Ew. An audio memoir of spiritual awakening. Oh, and it just came out. Ugh. No. No, no, no. Uh, I call her uh, Miss Mams with the Bobbiana. Julie Chen Moonves retweeted and said, I call her Robert. Wait, what was this tweet? I'm trying. problem is it's just a bunch of numbers so I don't know which one it is so I don't know when it's from so I don't know what you were trying to link to a tweet from like four years ago oh I'm not gonna find it okay can you just screenshot it and put it in the discord <laughs> it was an old tweet of the camp comeback kids why did I say kids? Because camp feels like it should be about kids, even if Buddy Games is currently on television. Uh, Josh Dumel, Camp uh, Camp Buddy Games started, or just Buddy Games? Like it's not even called Camp Anything. Um, Josh Dumel was explaining the premise of uh, Buddy Games at the start of the episode last night, and I couldn't find my remote, and I was like, turn it off, turn it off. But the remote was, like, lost in the covers because Cosmo was, like, invested with the bed. Julie, uh... Julie Chen Moonvest is all about God. Julie Chen, on the other hand, was just robotic. The Les Moonvest scandal changed her. Gross. It's really... Yeah, I mean, I know she used to just be Julie Chen. She did not go by Julie Chen Moonvest until recently. And then with her whole chest was like, Julie Chen Moonbez. Yes, I am married to this man. Like, she didn't have to do that. Even if she's not, even if she's speaking for him and in support of him and not divorcing him and blah, 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 whatever else, she didn't have to be like Julie Chen Moonbez. She could have just still been Julie Chen. Whatever. I look forward to being done watching Big Brother. <laughs> I see. Yeah, not great. Doesn't look good. BB21 was pre-pandemic, right? And by pre-pandemic, what I really mean is pre the Survivor Diversity Campaign. Um, 
and the CBS commitment to diversity in casting and production. It was, yeah, okay. Not that that's an excuse, obviously. That doesn't make it okay, and it shouldn't have been like that in the first place. Um, they were the first three people evicted. Yeah, that's a big yikes. It was a major factor to it. Yeah, I mean, it, I, it's been thrilling to see so much more diversity on the show racially and in other ways too you know diversity is not just race it's it's backgrounds it's upbringings it's religion it's sexuality it's gender it's all of those it's class it's disability it's all of those things and so seeing more of that i think makes for better television and not just in like drama but in that you get more stories that you wouldn't otherwise see and that's a really good thing more Nebraska people on shows. Yes, Rudy. Hi. Uh, she admits to becoming Christian when that news broke, which makes it feel even more weird. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to watch this television program until Sari is not on it anymore, and then I'm shutting down my Big Brother operation. The more I watch this show, the less I want to watch it. <laughs> I need a new survivor player. It's been since Africa. Oh, wow. And the winner got straight up accused of being racist during the final two questioning right before winning and his face when he comes out after winning is priceless. Oh no. Yikes, 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 yikes. Okay. Um, I don't have super long to play today. I should stop honestly about an hour from now. Uh, Cause like I said yesterday, I have plans this afternoon. Um, so I need to make sure I get the pupper outside before I go do my day. Um, I've never seen such an unexcited winner. It sounds like he should feel bad. So I'm glad he felt bad. Uh, as I like to say, sucks to suck. <laughs>